the unmistakable sound of the Tragically Hip, playing songs from their new album at a street concert in Toronto. For more than two decades, that sound has made the hip one of Canada's favourite bands. From southern Ontario's indie music scene, they made loyal fans all over the world by playing club after club after club. I don't know, I think on stage, first and foremost, we feel uh, a sense of camaraderie, you know, similar to troops going into battle. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> With frontman Gore Downey writing the lyrics, the hips, moody, evocative songs have sold eight million records. This first song is, uh, I think I wrote it with my wife in mind. <laughs> this week, the band gave free concerts in a hip Toronto neighborhood to promote their 13th studio album, now for Plan A. I went there to interview Downey, and afterwards we started talking more personally, and he asked for a chance to sit down again so he could be more frank about what's really behind this album, his wife's bout with breast cancer. Here's our conversation about why Gore Downey needed a plan A. So you're in the middle of writing an album and your wife is diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So what does, that, what does that do? Well, I mean, I had to learn how to cook, um, but that's not what you asked. It's, uh, you know, I've always uh, adhered to this, this quote that Raymond Carver's wife wrote about him, saying that poetry wasn't um, merely, the, I'm paraphrasing, reticence for what you, we meant to say. It's a place to be ample and grateful to those nearest and dearest our hearts. And so I've always thought that, and, and in this case it seemed, um, from a writing point of view, that, um, that nothing was cutting it in that regard. You know, anything I had done up to that point um, didn't seem applicable somehow, mm. and that I hadn't been reaching that hmm. lately or maybe ever, I don't know. Just the ability to um, speak of this, to, sp to be, to show my love and gratitude and devotion, hmm. fear for, uh, for my wife, my uh, friend. So. A lot of the lyrics in your album are about. I don't know, I guess about making it real. <laughs> Is that, like, how did it change? Like, what, what did you, did it change the way that you wrote or thought about your songs? Well, it def I think, you know, it makes you want to hurry up change. I mean, because you know that nothing will be the same anymore. You know, you're basically, you're saying, I'm going to live again without illusion. You're going to be real and, um, and try and live a, a beautiful, great life um, with your family and reality. And that's very uh, uh, freeing. Are some of the songs about your, about your experience with cancer, your wife's experience? Yeah. And then everything else, it, it became, writing became a real dilemma after that. You know, um, poor guy. Um, and I didn't really want to do it. I didn't see the point in doing it, you know, really. Um, but, and, um, yeah, so uh, The Look Ahead is a song that um, was entirely inspired by that Man Machine poem. These are songs on the record that, um, again, are me trying to, I don't know, trying to help mutely, you know, in that way that uh, a man around breast cancer tries hard to help and uh, and it's a struggle, you know, in the house and it's a struggle trying to balance that line, you know, um, you make so many mistakes, you know, mortality is not even really relevant and men seem to bring that up all the time, you know, I don't know about all men, but you know, it's a uh, and the women know the game is coming, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's not relevant. It's, there's decisions to be made here. And, and as cold and calculated as those decisions seem, they're actually, I think, a bit of an oasis of comfort because at least you're moving towards something mm. now. When I had cancer, everyone wanted to know how, you know, how are you, how are you doing? And no one, no one ever asks the husband what it's like. 
And there's a line in At Transformation where you talk about, I want to help you lift enormous things. What's, like, what is it like being the husband? Mm -hmm. Well, she might say, you know, I don't need help lifting enormous things, <laughs> you know? I just, anyway, don't just do something, stand there. <laughs> you know, Clint Eastwood's acting coach told him, you know? You told me that your wife asked you, so is this the cancer album? Is, is this the cancer album? She said, please, don't make it <laughs> uh, a cancer album. And um, so I had that also, that dilemma. I mean, it's really, again, poor me <laughs> writing. But it, uh, it. But do you want people to know that this is what you were thinking? I mean, here we are talking I do. about it. But. Yeah, because it cleared my mind. It focused my attention. It focused everything. And it was really hard and hard to do, and I didn't like it, enjoy it necessarily. But when I found something that spoke, it, I knew it, and that didn't wasn't something I necessarily labored over. Man, machine, poem is me talking to my wife, and you know, again, and, and somehow relevant to this conversation, turning this into a poem, into you know, the man, the machine, the poem, and she's the poem. I'm the machine. But it's still rock and roll. You could listen to it and never know. Yeah, and that's fine, and that's totally fine. And to the extent that, you know, people ask about the lyrics, uh, you know, I'm grateful because no one really does. And so the fact that I could talk to you and and uh, open up about that, I'm very grateful. It's because uh, it never happens. I never get the no chance. one ever asks you about the meaning of your song. They would ask me about the meaning, and I would come up with different reasons mm. that aren't the meaning. And uh, meaning doesn't always happen. You know, every song doesn't always have meaning, and um, I, maybe these don't either, but um, they mean something to me. But you're usually so private. I've read your clippings, you never talk about your private life. No, uh, and that doesn't make me a heck of a guy, but I, um, it's, uh, but in this case I thought, uh, yeah, I, I trust you. I, so is this the most important album you've ever made? I don't know. It's been brutal, though. It's been, you know, sort of doing it. It's and um, but I can sing it. it it's like um, it's profoundly affected how I do everything. It's um, the lyrics require an emotional quotient that's like rafter scratching. So to hmm. I just have to get up there, and and it's actually very easy to sing because you're just even if you can't hear yourself, if you're, you know, if your body is entirely you know, involved, then I know I'm there. I, I'm not explaining it very well, but just giving everything all out is actually the easiest thing to do. And that's like soup, just all emotion, and the lyrics get me there, and the music the band provides gets me there. And um, at Kensington Market, that was important to sort of see what that felt like, and it works. In the look ahead, it ends on the line, uh, come on, honey, just give me that look ahead. Mm -hmm. What's the look ahead? Mm, it's um, that it's going to be all right, that you know it's going to be all right, that you know we're going to, that everything's going to be all right, Good. no matter what. And she's got it. She always had it, but it, um, you know, diminished at that moment a little bit. And you realize how much you need it, how much I rely on it. Hmm. So, and uh, she's got it back, so. And you can keep an eye out for dates for the Tragically Hips upcoming tour.